This is Turtle Meeper. Turtle uh, is in, on insulin because Turtle's a diabetic cat. You can see from Turtle's body that Turtle's overweight, as many diabetic cats are. And Turtle used to eat a diet of mostly dry food. Which Turtle to a, a canned food is the common first line of defense against diabetes. And then we sometimes, if the canned food does not regulate the blood sugar, then we use a prescription diet, like DM. Um, and if they're really hard to regulate, cats are fed, maybe a more home-cooked, high-protein diet. Some cats, what happened to Turtle Meeper is last night he had two seizures and he came in, you can see his ears are twitching a little bit. Of course he's listening, but they're twitching a little. You can see the glazed look in his eye. His blood sugar dropped way, way low. And we'll show you how we measure that. It was 20 just a few minutes ago when we gave him some glucose. And we might even put him on an IV, yeah, IV fluids with glucose in it, but we gave him oral glucose. So we put a catheter in Meeper's vein because me. Meeper was uh, so lethargic and temperature was down and starting to kind of have seizures and uh, not feeling good and not responding to the oral yeah, blood sick. sugar, not responding to the oral sugar like I wanted. So we went ahead and we put a catheter in uh, in order to deliver oh, IV fluids oh and input oh, a catheter in a cat. You have to be really oh, careful and, and you have to be skilled because it's hard to get those little veins. So you tape them in very good and uh, and then we make sure and have the uh, catheter in exposed so we can get in there and with our IVs. And so you can see what a cat will do. Sometimes many seizures can start out with some <laughs> flicking and ear flicking. So, yeah, we'll give her a little while on the glucose. Let's put it up to uh, four times maintenance. Let's just give, let's give her a jolt of it. Is um, this two times? Yeah, just bring it, bring it up to like 16. 150. Let's go ahead, 100. Get her back legs. Never quite seen that before. The eyes are dilating and going back down, dilating, going back down. But we're giving her the glucose now at 100 uh, mils per hour. We're going to give her a good jolt of sugar in the veins and we're going to see if we can get her blood sugar up um, and make all that stuff quit. That's, a, that's what happens when you, go, you get low blood sugar. You pass out, you might seizure. Um, and your body does weird things, your brain does weird things, because it isn't getting the fuel it needs. So she's relaxed, um, her ears aren't twitching as much, and, but she feels them. Um, that's better than before, and she can definitely see. Um, it's not falling, my, and she can hear this cart going through the hospital. Her eyes have quit doing the weird dilation thing. Uh, so we, after about 100 mLs of the ringers with the dextrose in it, which is glucose, 50%. Um, and it's running now, I backed it down from up 100 mLs per hour to 30, which is more of a maintenance dosage. And you can see, we're, no, we're not seizuring now, and the eyes aren't doing the word thing, and it's acting more normal. It's amazing what a little sugar will do. Put a little another little pinprick. See that little tiny drop of blood coming out? And then get the machine and put it onto the blood and it sucks it right up in the machine. And it 
He's thinking, thinking, thinking. See, that's not very good. 43. <laughs> she did eat. And she ate, so that's good. So you can see uh, his name's Turtle Meeper. And he's, look at this back here. Come around back here, see? That's normal. That's not a seizure. That's just, that's just tired of getting messed with. So he's uh, doing a lot better and looking around as you can see and blinking and acting more like a, a normal kitty, cleaning herself. So in cats, we do recommend that you always feed them a can and dry because what if your cat needed to go be go on canned food all the time or need to eat canned food all the time? Um, even though canned food is a little bit harder to feed, a little messy. Um, it's better to train cats to eat both because if you get in a situation with urinary problems or diabetes problems, it, you want to try to get your cat to eat better and get off the insulin or never not have to use the insulin and not run into all these problems, then it's probably better to feed your cat a little bit of both. I went to the pet store and I got them a higher quality no grain froms and they love that dry food. And I am feeding a dry food now, which I didn't for a long time. And I'm, but they just they they won't eat anything. I try to get them to no grain canned food, uh, uh, they won't eat it. So I, but I do sneak it in every once in a while, and I do give my cats uh, a couple servings of meat, cooked chicken, sardines, shrimp, uh, a week, so they get used to that higher protein uh, part of the diet. Because remember, they're predators and they're usually meat's the best part, or meat is, is what they evolve to eat. And uh, more meat uh, helps them not get uh, as obese and keeps them away from diabetic problems, right? Don't you wish you would eat more meat and less of your brain? What? I know. So Meeper's a lot better today. You can tell she doesn't want to be messed with. She's, she's active. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get some urine to make sure she doesn't have a urinary infection or something to throw her diabetes for a loop. And then we're going to get a lot, another blood sugar this morning. But um, you can tell that we're going to do this with the swishing tail because it gives it more, more character. Um, her blood sugar yesterday was very low. It was 30. And, uh, so when we started the uh, IV drip of glucose, and, which is sugar, uh, blood sugar level went skyrocketed to 654 then it dropped down to 43 in a few hours and then it raised back up to 87 then we ran another test called the fructosamine and a fructosamine test which you can see there is called FRU was 221 now that's a little bit on the low side and uh, you can see it's low normal and it shows that for the past three weeks she, he, I got one, I want to call it she, he had a prolonged blow blood sugar. So what that tells me is when we started him on the insulin injections, he, it dropped his blood sugar too low and we have him on a very low level. So he was eating a better diet and it dropped the blood sugar too low, 221, uh, and that is a way for us to measure to see in one test how the blood sugar has been doing for a few weeks previously. So what that tells me is we probably should take him off the blood sugar, take him off the insulin, I'm sorry, injections. See if he can control his own blood sugars. Because remember his blood sugar was 30 when he came in. Now I'm not sure they did, the clients gave him a double up on his insulin uh, injection but I'm going to question more about that and you can see when he came in on July 14th he was truly diabetic he had a 473 glucose so it's kind of a weird um, presentation Meeper had a, a high glucose when he came in in July and uh, this is August and and uh, just after a short change of a better diet uh, he got it went way down in his insulin so I wanted to go over with you why cats get diabetes. I kind of rambled a little bit in this video. I'm sorry I called him or her and um, I just don't know if I did a good job explaining what I was doing but I'll go over it a little bit more for you so we can touch base and, and make sure you got the important lessons out of this out of the this video. 
Anyway, Meeper came in with a real low blood sugar, and you saw that it was 20 when we first measured it, and then it went up to 30, then it went up to 40. Uh, that was the first when it was 20. I did give him some caro syrup. Uh, you can use maple syrup, caro syrup, any kind of sugar. You just put it, squirt it right on the tongue in the mouth, and it will help them raise the blood sugar. So if you have a diabetic and they're laying on their side and breathing weird or seizuring, give them sugar as soon as you can whether it be a dog or a cat. And then we decided that your poor kitty was kind of cold and, and, and that the blood sugar wasn't coming up very fast with the oral. And uh, so we decided IV fluids might be necessary uh, in order to get the blood sugar up because then this poor meeper started to seizure uh, and do the weird pupil stuff and the foot stuff and it just was looking like I needed to get busy put a catheter in give me IV fluids and so that's what that was about the treatment was about diagnosing the condition of hypoglycemia uh, due to um, probably a uh, maybe a better diet caused the need for insulin to be less or maybe the owners gave another dose of insulin anyway so cat should eat a canned food preferably to dry food if they start to get fat because fat cats can get diabetic and also obesity causes arthritis and all kinds of other problems so always feed a cat dry food and wet food uh, in order to uh, make sure that if you ever have to feed them a canned food that they're amenable to that and you know what canned foods cats are so picky I can't really tell you which ones to feed uh, they will pick their own cat some of them pick their own food. Some cats like one type of food, some want another type of food. It's really hard to get a cat to eat what you want. And I'll tell you, I don't know what they put in some cat and dog foods, but it's like crack. They really want one or the other. So anyway, um, I just want to show you that and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.